Welcome back everyone. This is Chris. I just wanted to clarify that my YouTube channel is named uh, Nathan Five Chime, which is in reference to a train horn manufactured by Nathan. And the one that, that, that I like is a K5LA. But this video is on this Mark's engine. I'm going to try to repair the smoke unit. And the first thing we're going to do is take the motor out. So I, this is the very first time I've worked on the engine. I looked at the bottom here. looks like maybe the drive rods will slip out once I remove these two screws in the back. So let's see how it goes. Uh, the smoke unit. I tried... Uh, running the engine for a while and had it you know pretty over half throttle and no no smoke was produced so that comes right off there let's see we have to lift off the see if that'll come out yep it does have wires attached to the motor, which were hard to get to. Here. I'm guessing one's the headlight and one's the smoke unit. So that, that worked well. This drives the smoke unit back and forth to puff the smoke out. But the smoke unit is down in there. We'll go ahead and test the ohms of the smoke unit, see if we get any resistance. Alright, we're back here with the ohm tester. <clears throat> I have it just set on ohms and when there's no circuit, it just reads OL for, I guess, overload. And when you touch it together, like if it complete a circuit, basically goes to almost zero ohms. So if, if our smoke unit is working, we should read something other than OL. And I figured, I figured this big wire, heavier gauge wire, is the smoke unit, which is the coil of the smoke unit. And it's grounded to this. There's no other wire. And touching the two together, we get no, no connection. This other wire, the small one here, is the headlight. And we do get a, a reading on the headlight, which is actually connected, soldered right there. The headlight's 25.4 ohms. And the headlight is working. So we're going to have to remove the smoke unit to put a new one in so I'm gonna see how that's gonna work and I'll be right back all right I'm gonna try to take these have to take these rivets out they're not really riveted from the top or they are a rivet but they're punched at the bottom to uh, lip it over to attach it to this metal bracket but there is a recessed hole there and what I'm going to try to do is possibly well, grind this part off and then tap the remaining hole to see if I could put a screw back into it. I did remove there's a screw up here with a bracket that holds holds the uh, smoke unit up there this goes over top of that and then a screw, this screw goes on that, and that's actually screwed into the chamber of the smoke unit. I took that off to see if I could move it, but you can't. Uh, so it has to be taken off here. So that's what I'm going to do. <clears throat> and I'll let you know how it turns out. All right, well, once you grind off the rivets, 
Here's a rivet. Let's use this one. Oh. Of course, the rivet went down through the hole. There. And we ground the back side off. Yeah, one on this side, one on that side. I was able to push the rivet through and then the smoke unit comes out like that and just all the thing left up inside there is the headlight wires so the smoke unit yeah this is moved back and forth by the drive rods that pushes the plunger or the piston and puffs the smoke out of the hole there. <clears throat> this is the screw I showed earlier that basically just holds the smoke unit to the bracket. So what I found out is uh, these wire, the wire that does go to the smoke unit is a very stiff wire and what probably happened maybe if you move this wire around if you took the motor out you possibly could just break the break off the connection inside and you know that power doesn't travel to the heating element anymore so this lets you take that off and you can slide that out So down in there is a little chamber, but this is your ground wire from the smoke unit here. And I notice it's even, it's loose. This wire is pinched between there, but it's actually loose. And this, this wire here seems loose. So that's probably could have caused the problem is uh, this broke off inside but I did try it took the negative there and the positive here and it still didn't have any uh, effect there there's no connection so now I'm gonna have to grind these six tabs off to open up this casing so that's what I'm gonna work on next I discovered I was thinking about taking this apart but this this is some type of a mm, plastic or ceramic this has to come off it just a uh, tight fit there so we have to take that off first before we could separate this there's actually seven. There's one there at the top also. You can sort of see the heating element in there. But moving this doesn't move anything. Well, I ground off the seven spots. Now I'm I was able to pry it with a little screwdriver in this side first and just slowly work my way around to get it off without breaking any of these or breaking this casting. You have to be very careful. But when I opened it up, this was completely broken in half. You can see <clears throat> this piece it did that wire was the one that stuck out the side it's actually in a groove so it wouldn't have a very good connection just possibly uh intermittent there's see that it was there's a little filament there but it wasn't attached to anything and then this side of course like i said if you moved it back and forth that was gonna bend that possibly right in half 
So as you can see, the heating element is destroyed. So we'll replace this with a Lionel smoke unit or heating element. And I'll show you that in a minute. Oh, this is the Lionel smoke unit. I checked the ohm resistance of this coil and it was 29 ohms. And what I'm going to try to do is see this is where the smoke fluid would come down into the chamber. I'm going to try to put it toward this end. And <clears throat> when you buy these, they usually come with a wick. I'm not sure if it's a high temperature type wick, but that would go over it. And so when you drop the smoke fluid in, in the hole, hopefully it would, it would drop down onto this wick, which it looks like it would almost have to. And <clears throat> I'm going to try to bend it so the wire comes out there and on this side. Uh, but I'm <clears throat> not sure yet how I'm going to fasten this together. Maybe just a few, maybe, uh, I don't know, glue or not. Some type of glue. So let me work on this and, and get this put in. Well, here's what I decided I could do. This is the old wire from the old smoke unit. This is really stiff, the stiff wire, but it has this insulating, I guess, high temperature insulating material. So I stripped a piece off of that old wire and then I put it on to the new smoke unit and I bent it into that this shape here so I could uh, get it like that. I wanted to show you before I put the wick on that you don't want this wire to touch the, the metal casing. So hopefully that should hold up well enough. When I put the cover back on, I'm going to slip slip the wick down. And then I'm going to bend this wire to come out the same, same spot. Well, this is what it looks like now that I've put the wick on and bent the wires so that fits in that little groove that fits in the other groove and there shouldn't have any way for it to short then I'd put the cover this other half back on and be hurt help if I put it on the right way. <clears throat> but I'm going to solder a wire for the ground, cut this off probably, and, and solder a soft wire, a flexible wire, to run to the ground somewhere. And of course this will be the positive and I'll solder a wire to that and run it back to the motor again. But just not sure how I'm going to fasten this back together yet. Must, I'm going to have to glue it somehow. Of course, when you put that cover on this end, that's going to hold that end together. Like that. So, you really only need something on this end. Hold this end together. So, that's your mounting screw. Your smoke fluid goes down that hole. I can actually see the wick in there, so I think it's it should work. Maybe we'll, I'll test it before I put it back together.
it's smoking pretty good. All right. Well, here's how I've arranged the wiring on the new heating element for the smoke unit. See, I've uh, soldered wires to the element. The black, this here, black side with the insulating uh, high temperature insulation on it comes through here. And I've soldered a, a wire that will run to the power of the motor, the pickup from the pickup roller. And it would, of course, attach right there. And since the original one didn't have a grounding wire, I decided to add it. And I'm going to loop it around and connect it to the mounting uh, mounting hole here. I'll put a spade terminal on there, and that's where the ground for the headlight goes. Also, <clears throat> the headlight wire. So this this is the wire, the small wire from the headlight. That's the ground. Then the other end. Uh, goes to the motor. So what I'll do, what I've done is also installed the yellow material is a basically insulation but it, it came with the smoke unit that I bought as a little a kit to repair a Lionel. So I added that. Otherwise the smoke fluid is going to sit at the bottom of this chamber and you'd actually <clears throat> need a lot of fluid running loose around in there to even reach the wick. So the original one didn't have this material and that may be one reason why you have to add a lot of smoke fluid to the unit. And the wire I'm using is called Wireplex 22 gauge and the reason I'm showing you this is because it's very flexible. Um, because it has so many strands, you can see it's, I think, just guessing, there's probably at least 50 strands of wire in here. So this wire can flex hundreds or thousands of times before it would break. So it's especially good for, uh, well, wheels, like on the bottom of a searchlight car, or any type of, uh, wheel that's going to pivot when it's going around the curve. So I'm using it on here even though it won't be flexed that often but like I said before I think the smoke unit could have got damaged because of the solid wire being you know twisted and just breaking the heating element in half. So I think this about wraps up uh, repairing the smoke unit. I'm not gonna uh, I guess glue this together. It seems to hold itself together pretty well when I put the other half on it. And if it comes apart, I'll just maybe have to do put a wrap of wire around it to hold it. But thanks for watching this, I guess, how to video of repairing a Marks William Crooks. And maybe later I'll get a chance and uh, demonstrate the smoke output. And if you like this video, please subscribe and hit the like button. Thank you. Thank you.